Welcome to the Amazon Lit YouTube channel. My name is Eric. And I'm Sebastian. Do we have to do that every time? No, I don't know. They should know who we are by yeah, now. Yeah, right? like every video we do that. Yeah. Can do you know just... who we are yet? Can we just start? Like... We are going to talk about ourselves in the third person. Yeah. Humble beginnings. Yeah, humble beginnings. Where did you grow up, Sebastian? Uh, I was born and first started my journey in Jersey City, New Jersey. Okay, it's rough streets over there. It what was it like being young in Jersey City? Uh, you know, it was the 80s, there was graffiti, there was um, Stuff like that was happening. Keep going deep, bro. Give, them, give, it, give it to them the real, the real history of Amazon Lit. Okay. Or of the owners of Amazon Lit, not Amazon Lit. Okay, so we were complete derelicts and degenerates yes. back in uh, the early 00s, late 90s, or maybe yeah, not sure. late 90s. Well, yeah. yeah, late 90s, it probably started our, our degeneracy. Yeah, the degeneration process. <laughs> the degeneration <laughs> process. <laughs> Definitely late 90s. It's probably like 99 for me, like real late 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in 98. Definitely 98. I remember... I remember in 1998 going on a trip to uh, Poland to visit my family mm. and sneaking some pot into my uh, into my boxers to travel with overseas mm. and be real scared at the Newark airport like they're yeah. gonna find out about it. But they yeah. didn't because I was young and it's definitely pre 9/11. Pre 9/11. Yeah. Pre 9/11. No TSA. None of that there. Interesting. Um, yeah. How was that Poland trip? That was probably wild. Yeah, that's why I went. It was I got drunk the whole time and. Mm. Yeah, that's where I learned to drink. Mm. I learned to drink over there. My first time I drank, I was nine years old over there with my 18-year-old cousin, Greg. He took me to a high school party there. And I remember I got super drunk. And, yeah, probably one or two drinks. is my first time drinking. But all I remember is, like, I woke up on a couch there. And I stood up and there were all these girls laughing. I was like, oh, wow, I got the attention of all yeah, of them. Yeah. So I was like, oh, man, this is great. I need to this party. Is, I need to do this drink. every day. Yeah. Do this every day, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can listen. I can I can get with that. Been there, done that. Where'd you start your journey? Um, so Hackensack Hospital, September twenty third, nineteen eighty seven. This guy popped out of my mother's womb, um, full grown, this size. I was this size, full head of hair, incredibly good looking, like I am now. But yeah, and then you know, grew up right here, in North Jersey, North Jersey, born, born and raised. Any siblings? Uh, yeah, I got an older brother. Yeah. Kirk, good guy. He's uh, I'm 32. He just turned 36. He's um, and kind of like you, how with your cousins, you went to Poland and kind of got introduced to the party. And when I was younger, Kirk was kind of my influence into you know I always had older people around me and and uh, you know so like the the whole party scene was appealing and same with the girls and the friends and the attention it was definitely something i appreciated um, and then just almost like the validation was cool as well you know yeah 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 validation definitely definitely i mean i remember being shy and 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 all that so it definitely it helped with the shyness yeah yeah, yeah 100% get a couple drinks in you and no longer shy, you know, walk up to that cute girl in the corner, talk to the group of guys that you've been trying to give me friends with. So <clears throat> I get that 100%. Um, yeah, so all right. So that's like what we were like, both Jersey born and raised. So we represent the East Coast hard. Um, and just for anybody who lives in New Jersey, there is no Central Jersey. There's only North Jersey and South Jersey. And anything below the Driscoll Bridge is South Jersey, and Sorry. anything above it is North yeah. Jersey. So if you're below the Driscoll Bridge, you're less than. Uh, yeah, you're essentially less than. <laughs> essentially, you're but you might as well be from Philadelphia. Yeah. So you're you're actually live in Pennsylvania. Uh, that is PA, right? Yeah, except I think Atlantic City's North Jersey. <laughs> Atlantic City's North Jersey. We'll get that. We'll get that. <laughs> Definitely. Somehow it got fucking lost in the middle. There. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow Atlantic City became North Jersey. Or it always was North Jersey. It really. was. I think, I, I think there was a couple earthquakes back in the 1900s. That separated, yeah, separated. Slowly separated from North yeah, Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. But definitely Atlantic City. 
Definitely. Probably not some of the casinos. Some of the casinos might be might be South Jersey though. Do do you enjoy Atlantic City? I I've spent a lot of time and I don't know if I enjoy <laughs> Atlantic City, but I've definitely spent a lot of time and a lot of money in Atlantic City. Yes. Wait, wait, it was just me and yes. you, not with the girlfriend. Yes, it was just yes, me and you. Yes. That was a very degrading trip. <laughs> so Eric and I drove about two hours, two and a half, right? Mm-hmm. To Atlantic City. We got yeah. down there and we had all these grandiose plans yeah. of how we were going to gamble, make money, rent a room at the casino, spend the whole weekend there. <laughs> yeah. We were going to have a whole blast. I mean, you name it. Meet yeah. some girls down there. It was going to be yeah. the time of our lives. We get down there. We have a few hundred dollars. We end up playing roulettes and I think we lasted maybe 10 tops, 10 15 minutes. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and we had completely lost everything <laughs> and nothing in our bank accounts left. <laughs> And then we get back in your car, yeah. and we realize that we don't we even have no money, money to get, to out, get out, of out of the parking garage. garage yeah. We have to pay to get out. We didn't have any money. Wait, so what do we do? We I had think to we walk. took change, and then we go in and we play the, the big wheel, Did where we? you can bet a dollar, and I think we flipped the dollar into two dollars. <laughs> That's how I remember. I remember walking to TD Bank. And oh, probably. <laughs> Well, probably, we walked to TD uh, back, pulled out like the last $20 yeah. in our account. It's that. funny how people, different people remember. <laughs> I remember this like last minute life saving effort where we go into the casino for our last $5 on, on a number. It sounds like the story your gambling addiction told you. <laughs> Which happened is you made it back. You made all that money back. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, AC's fun. I, I honestly, I don't think I'd ever go again, though. No, no. You know? Maybe if I had, like, tickets to a show or a comedy show, a concert. I think the last time I went to AC... Wow, I can't even remember the last time I went to AC. I almost went to that convention down there a couple months ago, but I passed on that. Yeah, I don't know, too. I can't tell you last time I was down there. Yeah. I know we went to Vegas. We're going to Vegas in March. That's yeah. going to be fun. Trade we show in August. August. Trade yeah, show walk. It's going to be great. Yeah. yeah, we'll be there, and then we'll be in Anaheim again in March. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, so so then what? Go up in the Jurors, and then what would you do? Like uh, I'm talking like when you... Uh, like 18 and on like what did you do because i'm 32 now you're 34 so from 18 to 26 i was a bartender and a waiter okay really you know that's what i got into i mean that was like the full-time hustle and i had some side hustles but you know that's what i did i enjoyed it because uh you know it was it was quick money and you know i enjoyed food i enjoyed the restaurant mm. business i did it. i enjoyed it i liked the people the crowd uh, so I did that for many years. I started off like on a Ruby Tuesday, and I worked mm. my way up to some of the, the the top restaurants in the New Jersey area. I worked some top catering places in New York. But then at uh, at 27, I just had a life altering moment where uh, you know I decided to get out of that. It wasn't mm. uh, it wasn't fulfilling anymore. You know, it wasn't fulfilling working for somebody else. And, and I know just like you, man. Like I mean, how many jobs have you really had? Like long term jobs, like long term, no. like nine to five. Yeah. We we really have, we struggle working for yeah. others. Yeah. We struggle working for others. Yeah, short term jobs, tons of them. Three months, four months, six months. You did that weeks. fencing job, right? You yeah. remember that? Right? Oh man, I, I done that. fencing, McDonald's. Uh, McDonald's didn't last long. They were like yeah, what sixteen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was my first job ever. Um, I worked at some construction companies. I ran a construction company. Yeah. Um, I worked at a car detailing service. Um, did some side hustles. Yeah. I don't know what else. There's, I'm sure there's some other jobs in there that I can't think of. I've worked at a Muscle Maker Grill. I think my longest running job before you know, we, we started doing this. Um, the Asian place? Uh, the uh, French Asian fusion place or working with Humble Ted. Humble mm. Ted had his side gig. Yeah, landscaping, he, 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 right? Yeah, he did landscaping mm. and that was his, uh, the, the right-hand man that would show up sometimes, not always, but what I did, you know, we get the job done and I think that was one of my longest running jobs, but that was seasonal, so I thought, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah but, Whatever yeah. happened to that business? You just stopped doing it? Yeah, you know, uh, customers went and I wasn't doing it anymore with yeah. him and he didn't find someone to do it with him and it just became it became a hassle more than a hustle. Yeah. So he let that go and then, you know, he joined this with us, you know, with uh, back 
back when it first started, you know? Yeah. yeah. So me too, you know, I grew up in, in Jersey my whole life and that's been my story. I have two siblings, a stepbrother and a half sister. Uh, one's older, one's younger. I don't really have contact with my stepbrother. Wait, your stepbrother? Yeah. What? Well, this guy for 17 years, all of a sudden he's got a fucking stepbrother? Yeah. Where's he living, dude? Florida. Oh. Florida. Kyle. Oh, man, you think you know somebody <laughs> until you do a YouTube video with them. You know, I'm telling you, if you have a friend, you got to do a YouTube video with them because if you don't, you're never going to know who they Come on, are. you did you do without Kyle. You must have forgot. You've even probably met him. His name's Kyle. I have no idea. You've probably even met him. I've met him, too. He's a few years older than me. But no, he, um, it was pretty ugly when I was like nine years old. He was 12. And he went to visit his mom on vacation and never came back. Mm. And there was court involved. And my, my stepbrother was devastated. And, you know, it changed the whole family dynamic. Yeah. And I, I really haven't had contact with him since. Mm. So, I mean, you're talking, you're talking 25 years. Wow. So, yeah. So, yeah, if I don't bring him up, it's because he's just not on my mind. Yeah. Yeah, which happens. It's common. It's crazy relationships with family. They could be the most freeing and the most fruitful relationships, but they could also be some of the hardest to maintain. Absolutely. Definitely. And it takes some work and some effort. Definitely. Absolutely. And then, and then, you know, in the last live video we were doing, and people asked, like, how have we stayed in contact and how have we learned to trust each other through business and regular relationships? And I really, when I was thinking about the filtering process, mm -hmm. it really is. Like, I mean, we both had tons of friends and through the years it's like the circle just yeah. gets smaller, smaller and smaller, smaller and smaller and smaller once you see who, who you can rely on and who's got yeah. your back at the end of the day it just gets smaller and smaller and uh, and that's what it is you know yeah I mean shit, I know you've had friends die I've had friends die we've had yeah. friends go other ways and then you just have friends that you find out aren't friends they were just party buddies which is yeah, cool acquaintances yeah cool which is cool it's just part of part, part of, of life. life yeah part of life absolutely yeah I've had some of the craziest times of my life with this guy. Some of them. <laughs> can, can, can we talk about that? Oh, that, my God. Has it passed the seven-year point? I don't know. We might have to have one of our team members look into the legality of this yeah, before yeah. we talk about it. Yeah. But some crazy times between trips to, like we were talking about before, Atlantic City and city trips. We used to spend, what, every, what was that, Tuesday nights? Yeah, Tuesday nights. Every Tuesday night, we'd go to the city. What um, do we do? I was I was living in Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, so Sebastian would come stay out by me, and we would actually go perform. We perform at open mic nights yeah. where we were inspiring or aspiring rappers. Inspiring yeah. to some too. Yeah, yeah, inspiring to some. We were definitely a lot of times the only white dudes in the entire club, and we never got booed off stage. So yeah, it says a lot. Yeah, yeah, it was a different time. Yeah, but 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 our we were also derelicts. So. Yeah. So it, it didn't kind of, the the process of growing that, it didn't work. If we were in the same mindset that we have now, I think we could have done something with it. Oh, I know we could have. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. But yeah, some crazy nights. Crazy nights. How about when we went to Penn State? Remember that? When we oh, went to visit yeah. my cousin in Penn State? Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, so... So I remember, I remember I woke up, it was like three o'clock in the morning, I passed out, I woke up on the couch to some girls screaming, I'm like, what is going on? And my cousin was living in this International House of Friends. That's what it was called, yeah. It was yeah. called the International, International House of Friends at Penn State, and Eric and I went up there, we were going to go, we think we went for a couple days. You know, we brought some, some, some weed with us, and we were smoking and stuff, and uh, this one, I guess one girl, what happened with her? Because I was sleeping, what happened? Yeah, so she never smoked before, and at the time I couldn't smoke for legal reasons, and uh, so I just was giving people you know, ganja to smoke, and, and she never smoked, and I was like, yeah, sure, if you want to smoke, here, try it, and she smoked, and she, like, really, like, freaked out, like, she, for, like, 10 minutes, she had, like, a conniption, and it was, like, listen, I know it's, it, listen, it's marijuana is practically legal in, I don't know, 10 states now, it's, it's, yeah. you know, it's not harmful, it can be if you, you know, use too much of it, but uh, I knew she wasn't going to, like, nothing bad was going to happen, she was yeah. just tripping out a little bit, yeah. but Sebastian, she woke Sebastian up, yeah, she's screaming, she was, she's yeah. screaming and crying, and all these international friends who's, who have never, speaking all different languages, <laughs> speaking all different languages, never partaken in something like this, and, 
and they think of marijuana, some of them as the devil because, you know, they're just from different parts of the world. Yeah. And, and I get it, you know, yeah, it's something yeah. that's not custom like it is here. And long story short, at, at the morning, my cousin just comes up to me when I get up and he goes, I think it's time you guys leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, we originally said we were coming for the night yeah, and I think we stayed for like three or four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we definitely outwore our welcome. Yeah. There. It was fun though. That was a fun time. Yeah, and that's one of the more mundane stories. Yeah, definitely more of the mundane. Uh, yeah. Definitely more of the mundane. Yeah, so that's <laughs> that's, that's it. That's yeah. our lives. In a nutshell. In a nutshell.